Okay. <clears throat> so, this is gonna be a slightly longer ramble than normal for this yapping video. It's more gonna be of a pre-ramble, <laughs> I guess. But uh, I just wanna say, uh, for any of my Melty Blood yapping videos, you know, the ones where I'm actually like trying in order to be uh, helpful in terms of advice and something, I very much appreciate any uh, advice or any any advice or any con constructive criticism of these. Like, I guess I get I kind of get it that they're not as good for learning as like a more edited and more streamlined video. And I do understand that, but I kind of want to make these yapping ones because. I don't know, they, they're funner to make for me, and even though they tend to go on a lot longer, I still get like a lot of people saying that they don't mind, or, or they, that they kind of like them, so I assume they're not too bad, I'm just, but that's just my happy cool. But if you guys have any advice or anything, or if you have something you think is bad with these uh, yapping videos, please don't feel uh, scared to tell me in the comments or to reach out to me on Discord, because I do appreciate all the advice that I get from you guys. Uh, like uh, for this one, I was considering doing it on like a stream or something. However, I kind of realized, uh, well, not really, I realized I floated that idea around in chat and toast, like heart, aka hardbread. He kind of he was like, uh, that's that's sort of a stupid idea, and that it would be much more smarter than if I did it in like a more streamlined version. And I was kind of tight when he said that, but when I realized it, that. Uh, he was like completely right. Like my very first yapping video on this channel is the H Kohaku, my complaints with H Kohaku thing. And watching it back, like a week afterwards, I was very like very unhappy with it. Like of course it's it's my first time recording actual like me talking on this channel for like the intent to teach or I guess. But the whole VC thing, the whole Discord thing, it just didn't work out. And kind of just it very much made the thing worse. So. I do kind of want to remake that one, maybe in the future, maybe as like a more edited, more streamlined video. But as of as it is right now, uh, yeah. Uh, but however, the idea of performing this as like a stream thing, I, I still kind of sort of want to do it. Maybe, but instead of doing it as like a yapping video, maybe I I'm thinking I'm using the, um. Uh, my discussion cord i'll put the link to it at the description uh to in order to get people to like come together and talk about a melty blood discussion topic and have and do that like it's a town hall or something so i'm again i'm linking my discord for melty serious melty blood discussion in the description however i know like i know i'm taking a little bit to get to the thing again i said this brain ramble is going to be longer than normal uh if you want this video's information without any of my wit or any sarcasm or anything like that, I posted a document that has the basic outline of this script as like concise as possible. It's also going to be in the description along with the link to the Discord. That way people who aren't like, they don't like my humor, but they still want to understand the stuff or they just don't want to give me the view, which is fair, I guess, uh, they can just read that and i don't have to worry about it being a little rambly or a little long in places because hey i will be uh time stamping this and i know i said this for the h Kroku one but this time i actually will be time stamping it. i'll be like taking note of the time on obs on the recording when i start talking about certain t subjects that will last a little long and i'll actually like time stamp it as almost as soon as it goes live so don't worry about that uh but like, also, there's like one last thing I wanted to do for the preamble is I want to take more advantage of the fact that this is recording. So there's going to be like I'm, all the music that you're hearing, like the background music is going to be edited into the background. So I'll, I'll, I, that means I can listen to my own music <laughs> while I do these. But I'm like, I'm not listening to what you're listening to in the background right now. I'll probably be putting like Penny's Big Breakaway. Maybe I'll be really funny since it's April Fool's and I'll put like a whole bunch of Strive music that I don't like in the background. Cause it... <laughs> but like, I, yeah, there's just music in the background that I can't listen to right now. And I think also before I start, 
again, I know, pre-ramble that's five minutes long. What is this Amal guy doing? Uh, special thanks to Gomp for fact-checking all of this information. It's very, very, very appreciated. So, just going to pause right now. But before I start, this is the, or this is the last thing. This is the last thing to the pre-ramble. Uh, I want to be, like, pausing a lot. And, like, you can see that I have the whole... My inputs are being recorded. I have the hitbox viewer able to be turned on at a moment's moment if I need to showcase something. My notepad is very, very long. Like, I, I posted down the edited down version of the script. Like, if I pull up the notepad... Can I do it without, like, okay. If I pull it up like this, you can see that I can scroll down a whole lot. So, yeah, there's a lot to go through for this yapping video specifically. So it's going to be very long, probably, like an hour, probably, because I'm also going to be showing examples, and I'll also be pausing and showing up YouTube examples, too. So get your popcorn, get your dinner, or whatever. Yeah, this one's going to go long. And I'm going to pause real quick so I can get a drink of water before I start. <laughs> okay, so I know I said I'd start immediately as soon as I came back from my water break, but I'm actually looking over my notepad real quick, and there was two points that I had to make real quickly. First things first, like earlier I said that I was thinking about streaming this, but I realized that was probably not very smart. Since I can just, you know, stop the recording at any point, I'm thinking about maybe once I'm a little... Once Amal Court is a little bit more set up, that I might like have like a listener role where I can do some yapping live, and then I can pause it and respond to questions in between different sections. Like I do like the yapping live, and then I pause it before I go to the next section, or I take that way I can like easier answer questions easier, and I could maybe like record those like small parts and maybe edit it down into a video. That's something I am interested in doing maybe in the future. Not for this one though. And I think there's one last thing I had to put. Let me double check. I'm, this was, I thought this might take like 10 minutes to go through, but thankfully it's only taking like eight instead. Oh yeah. Uh, thank you for all you guys watching this. I don't, like, <laughs> well, I'm, like, I know it sometimes reads like weird when I ask to do these lives, but I'm not doing it to like, you know, check myself off or anything. I very, I'm just trying to get the information out there easier or quicker, I think. Because I, I, <laughs> I feel like sometimes if I, like, stream it, then people can, like, watch it, like, faster or whatever. And I'm not, like, doing this to, you know, like, preach for the sake of preaching or whatever. So thank you for all of you who watch these or all of these who learn something from this. So give me one second as I start up, <laughs> as I pause again in order to start the actual, you know, video video. Okay, so if you are wondering what could drive a man to uh, write up a whole, spend two hours of his Saturday right after work, uh, writing why H Moon sucks and why people should like do their homework, uh, this I was at work again. Uh, it was slow, so I was on my phone. They don't really mind if you're on your phone as you if you do all your work. So I see this. I see this message. Uh, H Moon saving your life. Wish that auto burst could be baited. Then Lilith sees new, so she doesn't know exactly what to say to that, so she says it can, but I don't know if Hime can specifically bait it. She probably can, but I don't know how. And then Otako says uh, it should be a free punish. And <laughs> this got me tight when I saw it, like immediately, because I was like, uh, let, me, let me pause for a second and pull up my message. Actually, you know what? I'll just read it out loud. You're pro this is a part of the video that's going to be like more talky, so it's fine. Uh, let me pull it up on Discord. I don't want to like show on my Discord, but let me pause real quick. Yeah, so this is what I said. <laughs> Bro, how do you say this with a straight face? I replied to him and he's like, he's, he says easy. And I was like, damn, I wish the automatic burst that I know is going to happen could be baited. Sucks I couldn't just like buffer or jump behind the button or something. And then t -Bub is, uh she asks, can you actually punish it after jumping? I don't think I've ever gotten a punish. And I said, I say you force him to block. Now, I can't show you the rest because Icarus was on that at that time and he was horny posting. So I, if I scroll down anything. Yeah. But the point is, I saw this and I was like, man, how, how the tables have turned. Uh, 
H Moon is so rarely played in LFG and A because all the H Moon players stopped playing because they either swapped to different moons. Like Toast used to be an H Alco player and now he plays C Alco. And all the other people who played H Moons who still play, like they played H Moons in PS2, they swapped over to C and F Moons. Uh, why? That's because H Moon got massively nerfed from PS2 to CC. So if you didn't know, the major nerf happened to be about H Moon 6AA. Let me take control over Sion real quick. Actually, I need to pull up on um, hair one side. So give me one second to. Well, it's not gonna be a second. You know what I mean. Okay, so we're back with H Kwaku. So one of the major nerfs to H Moon happens to be their 6AA combos. Now, if I use the train display tool, you can see that the correction value for the 6AA is 80%. So that's actually relatively good for a, you know, correction value. However, if we do it from a 5A, you can actually see that's 80% multiplicative. That was the nerf. That was like the big nerf that H Moons got universally that kind of neutered their damage because back in PS2, H Moons would just fart out damage. They'd do like 6K from every single combo. Like the combos from for uh, Command Throw from H Kwaku, Nowadays, they do like 4K if you do them properly. Back then, they were doing like 5, 6K from Command Throw, mind you. A 50% scaled starter because 6A was um was override instead of multiplicative. So they all got that universal nerf that made them do a lot, a notably less damage. And then they also got a bunch of other hits to their uh, mechanics. First off, uh, H-Moon Auto Heat used to be like h uh f moon instant heat like as soon as you entered heat as h moon in ps2 you immediately got all your health back similar to ih this got nerfed in uh cc to be more like c moon blood heat so it still recovers faster than c moon regular heat but it's still you know it's not instant which is another nerf that h moon's got that's kind of like a little bit rambly i guess because that's not really the issue that i had with the statement but more so the fact that um h moon is not actually that bad is a sentiment that you can see in lgna every now and then and like i said that you could argue that in actress again because uh, a lot of the top tiers in actress again or uh, also known as ps2 were h moons like it was h tono h uh Viakia, H Kohaku, H V Sound, those were like the top five characters. And, but I'd argue that it's more so, it wasn't really that their system mechanics were broken and more so the fact that the characters just did too much damage because of that 6AA thing. And the fact that the characters back in <laughs> PS2 were just stupid. Like if you were to ask me, I'd say it was more so the characters and the system mechanics, but uh, Kamani didn't agree. So he nerfed all those characters individually and he also hit their system mechanics as well. Like, however, H Moon not being that bad is definitely not true in CC. So when people say stuff like H Moon burst or auto heat annoys me or stuff, it kind of gets on my gears because like on one hand, the reason they think that is because the few H Moon players that exist are like really, really good. Like I'm not that good, but Art is like way better at abusing the, he's way better at gaslighting you into thinking that H Moon is good because he's just a very fundamentally strong player. Uh, but also, also, um, a lot of the H Moon counterplay, like the stuff you're supposed to abuse the H Moon for for doing due to their character choice, it's not as shared publicly as often anymore due to the fact that again, the most active H Moon player right now is me. So that means if you're not like playing versus me super frequently, or if you're just not asking me, uh, yo, how can I take advantage of the fact you're H Moon, or what am I losing to? that I'm doing really often. If you're not asking me that, you're probably not like practicing H Moon counterplay versus anyone else other than like Ryder, I guess. Cause Art rarely plays if you don't DM him for games. So it's very difficult to get games versus someone on H Moon who knows what they're doing. Like Shinobi is another person who plays H Moon very seriously and very well. But again, he's normally busy with his job. So you get, it's just hard to get H Moon games right now. And because of that, 
a lot of the counterplay isn't as shared very often anymore. And there's also like bad habits people have versus H Moon. Like they play me a lot, but I don't. I'm very bad at capitalizing on some certain bad like habits that people have versus H Moon. I, I sort of think that those is like people having bad habits versus me less so than H Moon. But maybe I'm not sure. Again, it's very hard to get footage of people playing versus H Moon in general because the moon server over here. But that's why I'm fixing my mistakes by making this video. Like the idea, my the idea when going into this is like, why? Well, while well, I was kind of mean to Otaku, I I don't really regret being that mean though. I, f I feel I should at least do like the bare minimum and explain to people why H Moon is bad and what they're losing to when they're losing to H Moons, and uh, how to like deal with every single system mechanics H Moons have specifically in order to like tip the scales in your favor, because like there's a reason why. If people don't really recommend H moons anymore, and they most like the only H moons people like unironically recommend are Hime and Spike Ball, and the reason people recommend those two is because they're piss easy. One, two, they're extremely good, and three, if you want to actually put in effort, there there's cool stuff on those characters that people don't do because they're H moon, and the, the fact that they're H moon usually gets people to stop playing them very seriously that and the fact that they're so piss easy and so brain dead and play a kind of different game than most of the other characters in melty blood so they might not like actually interest you but normally people don't recommend other h moves like no one ex recommends h kawaku to a new player unless they're saying something like uh she's the grappler of melty blood and they're not clarifying enough but yeah so i'm just fixing my mistakes and just explaining every single aspect of H Moon to people, so that maybe that maybe <laughs> maybe we see a rise of H Moon counterplay, and people won't lose to the same H Moon bad habits that I sometimes see them too. Okay, so first things first, we're going to talk about the most obvious bad habit that I see, which is dealing with H Moon burst. Give me one second to set up a training mode in order to showcase this. Okay, so I finally have a good dummy set up, uh, but let's read how h uh, works. So, eyes on the screen if you have this in the background on a different tab. So, first things first, h enter a burst automatically once they hit 200 meter if they're not knocked down or in block stun or hit stun, which is the strongest advantage to their heat due to the fact they enter it while they can enter it while performing a combo. So, if we have that situation, as while she's getting hit by the two A's, she's not going to burst. Or if I combo her into a real deal Super Aku combo. That's weird. I'm getting some weird... Why is it lagging? Is it because it's training mode? Do I have something else open? Yeah, anyway, she doesn't, you see, notice how she doesn't enter heat until after the combo is done. However, if she was comboing me in this situation, I'm going to use my keyboard real quick. If she did a combo, she'd enter, uh, she'd just enter as soon as she hits 200. So that's like one of the, that's the main advantage to H Moon Heat. That's why you can enter it while doing a combo and start regening health during that time. And if I like sweep her, she doesn't enter heat till she wakes up. Even if she's meatied, like even if I meaty her and she's set to block. Yeah, she's always going to enter heat. Is she not? Yeah, she's not set on block, my bad. I need to set this to after a combo. Oops. Yes. Now, H wounds will recover life passively in heat, and they will own an auto burst automatically once they get hit, with few exception. Now, if we both were to counter hit each other, so let me set the dummy to do something like I'm gonna hit her once and then order a new. Now we're going to do something like this. I'm going to pause and record the dummy real quick. Okay, so I have this dummy set up. That's going to immediately jump in afterwards to showcase this next point. If we were to both trade with each other for whatever reason. 
Let me time this. Yeah, if we both trade, she's not going to auto burst. However, even if that's the case, she can choose to burst if she does get that situation. I don't know if I can set dummy to actually do that burst, now that I think about it. But you can choose to burst here if you both trade. Like, she's not, like, locked out of it, but she can choose to burst. She's, like, it's as if she got, uh, it's, like, how you can choose to burst once you manually hit 200 during a combo as H-Moon. Same deal here. Uh, what's the other parts of this dock that I have for H-Moon burst? Right. Okay. I'm gonna set it to manual again. If you get hit by the burst, it is a soft knockdown, meaning that you can tech. Now, don't tech. I'm gonna explain why later, but you're not supposed to tech this. Like, you can tech this any which way, but don't you you don't want to tech the burst. I'm saying that three times now. I'm gonna say it like a trillion times later. Do not tech burst if you get hit by it. If you do, you do it at your own peril. Whatever. Now, other information about burst is that you can't... Auto burst doesn't happen if you get hit by command grab. Or if you get hit by a regular throw. These always lock burst, regardless of character. If this is not like a H-Moon specific thing, but it's just... If the same deal happens to h -Moons. However, heat doesn't go away either, it just ticks down naturally while, you know... Until you get back up again. Now, but if I counter hit the opponent, they cannot burst until hit stop is over. This is not, again, this is not specific to H-Moons, that's just how burst works in general in this game, but it's very important for H-Moons due to the fact that since you know their burst is coming, they know their burst is coming, that if you get like a very strong counter hit, like let's say you get like a counter hit like JC for whatever reason, like let's set this dummy to do something like this. Yeah, it's like fish for a 5A counter hit or something. They don't burst until the hit stop is over. Compared to if they get regular hit, they don't burst until the regular hit stop is over. And also, there's that <laughs> rule from earlier where if we trade with each other, they don't burst at all. Now, unlike every other moon, when you burst in the air as H Moon, you are completely in Volta Strike on the way down. So let's again record another thing to do this. So this dummy is just going to J9 in the air, not holding any buttons. And I'm going to 5B them. It's going to whiff because 5B is slightly disjointed. However, unlike if they were a C Moon, I cannot hit them until. They hit the ground and recover. However, it's important to note that even in this situation, universal to all bursts, you can always go there for them. So that's the answer to when you get those weird burst situations like that. You're supposed to go there for them. However, if you're not able to go there throw, you have to do the same thing you do as if the opponent was on the ground first doing something. But this one's set to jump too. Let's do one that's set to do nothing instead. Like maybe like dash, like immediately dash. Okay. So let's say we do a burst on the ground, and let's say it whiffs somehow, like like that. Now, if you have a command grab, you can actually punish, like get a true blue punish. It's frame perfect, of course, but you can actually. There's a single neutral frame after burst happens, which you can throw the opponent, like regular throw them, but they can tech. And it's a real deal 50 50 because they have to either tech on the neutral frame or, or shortly afterwards, or. Or, like, they can't jump out of this throw if you do it as soon as possible. I don't know the timing really well in this situation. But on timing, I do know is that it's a lot easier to just command throw them. Because they can't take that whatsoever. Now, if you're not trusting yourself in like the 50-50, it's still worth notice noting that 
This is just a regular strike throw 50 50 with no strike protection. Not strike, but throw protection. Because you can meaty them like that. Or you can just throw them on their very first active frame. So it's a real deal 50 50 that's very strong versus H moons. And you take all the way of their meter when you hit them in their burst. However, that means you have to not get hit by their burst. How do you do that? Well, because you know that the H moon will burst if they are hit, unless one of those ex uh, ex exemptions that I showed up earlier happen, what you gotta do is you simply gotta hold up when you're bursting. If you can see there, if you do, if you do J9 or J8, it will work like 100% of the time. However, if you J7, the closer they are to you, the more likely it fails. So when you're mashing versus a person in burst, you need to be willing to you need OS enough. Because you can OS it in a way it since you're OSing the hit and you're trying to hit cancel it, you you're not gonna jump if you don't hit them. Like you can see my inputs there, but I'm gonna show it using an input display here as well. If you hit up like this, if someone hits into this, if they get hit, they're gonna you're gonna jump immediately. If they block, that you're not gonna do anything. However, yeah, you immediately jump right after. Now this is important because as you that situation earlier where you get like a 50-50, it's still the same here. Because you can see that I land before they even get their uh, hurt box back. So before the brush recovers, I land, meaning I can meet them with like an air button if I decide to like. Let me set the dummy to dash at me again. I can meet you with an air button if I do something like, like the late J. Maybe in this situation I have to do, yeah. Yeah, I can meet you with the JC if I do something like that. Or like I need like I get like a mean mix here. It's gonna change, of course, banning on character, but you do get to mix up your H moon opponent and yoink all their meter away when you hit them with an H moon burst. As long as you remember to either OS it by holding up or to OS it by 5D. Like if you react to the hit, you can you can just hold shield. Now this is harder than holding up, but it has the advantage of being something that, like if you're doing this offline, it's a lot easier to confirm. Now what if, let's say I'm in the air and I'm hitting versus them in who's on the ground. I'm just gonna hold five here in this dummy because it's easier to. So let's say they're I'm on the ground and my opponent ha has HP and burst. Well, first things first, because they are in H moon burst, they're going to more likely to do stuff like they're gonna fish for an anti air, more likely. Because like they don't care if they trade at all in H moon burst. However, if they don't want to be air to airing you in H moon burst because of the whole gold air throw situation. So they're likely gonna like mash their good air to ground. And assuming you like trade with it. I should like do this instead. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So if you don't counter hit them like that, you still can just hold up. Like, of course, you don't want to hold this, like, when they block, of course. But it's just safer to just hold up and, like, disengage immediately. It's just safer to immediately disengage than to get hit by the burst. Because you don't really want to get hit by the burst, of course. Like, of course, that situation is not ideal. But it's safer than just hitting to the burst, like hitting them like this and not.
Like you, maybe you can like buffer air dash if your character has a god like downwards district like KC Kwaku here. But again, you don't want to get hit by the burst. Like, but let's say for some reason you use all your air options and you hit into the burst regardless. Like here, there's nothing I can do about this burst here. Like I guess you could shield, but at that point, yeah. Like. But what do I do here? Again, like I said earlier, you don't want to tech because what the opponent should do in this situation, like I'm going to save a play after I get hit by the burst. Uh, save right here. And I'm going to set the dummy to do this. They're gonna, they should walk up a little bit and then as soon as they see you press anything, press like a... A relatively active button. Oh, yeah, it's not gonna be perfectly timed because I'm doing this like all manually. Yeah, you see, I've been really. However, burst is so, I mean, tacking is so long that your opponent can react to it and hit you with a button that's relatively active and get a true punish on your tech and then kill you for it. Like, this is a, a universal thing with the burst in this game. You're not supposed to tech burst, like, at all. It's, but people do it a lot. And, like, JG... JG was, like, was, like, the main person to tell people to not tech burst. And I know that, I guess, he's not... He doesn't play and he doesn't do uh, Vod Refuses often anymore. But I, I, should, I shouldn't have to be the one to say it. Please don't tech burst. Like, if you're teching burst, you are hoping that your opponent makes a mistake. And if you want to actually play more consistently and win more games, you shouldn't be playing as if your opponent is going to make a mistake unless they have already shown themselves to be making a mistake. Like, let's say if your opponent is uh, in this situation and they're like dashing all the way in for some reason. Like, some characters do actually dash in and get like a relatively active button that they are allowed to uh, chase you down with. Like, maybe like Sion would dash and do something like this. But if they're like dashing into you on bursts like consistently, like let's say this happens like a lot and I'm hitting into bursts and F-Ton as a C-Moon for whatever reason, then you could like risk the back tech in order to go back to neutral, I guess. But I mean, you're just not supposed to tech burst. There, <laughs> like people do this versus me all the time, and I'm like, okay, really? You're gonna ask me for advice after this? Actually, you're gonna check my burst because I, I'm not like, I get it when they do it like when I'm consistently like, sometimes if I'm like trying to be greedy and I, <laughs> I, I like drop two two a after a burst knockdown, and if if you tech that and you kill me for it, fine, whatever, I guess. But if I'm like staying around doing nothing and you tech button or tech DP, I, I just like, is there much hope for you? Are you a Sasuke player at heart? Are you like, do you just not care? <laughs> because you can't complain about HMU mechanics when you are putting yourself in situations where HMU mechanics, like they're not that scary. Like, yeah, no one wants to eat a soft knockdown that they could have teched and then eat, like, a basic meteor or whatever. But that is way more preferable than, you know, getting hit and risking your opponent playing smart and killing you for teching their burst. So just don't tech burst. Okay, now give me a moment to set up the stuff for the second thing that we're going to talk about, which is going to be H Moon Shield. Okay, so I realized before I... I could talk about uh, H-Moon uh, Shield, that there were some, some things I were forgetting that I almost forgot to read off my notepad. So I'm here in post to edit that. This move, Pit, from FBI Kill, will actually automatically trigger H-Moon Burst, even in Blockstone. However, it does not showcase in training mode, because the training mode thinks it has the move programmed correctly. However, in a match, if you were to do this, you would realize very quickly that the H moon will automatically burst. So give me one moment to pull up a clip of this happening in a game. Okay, after looking through my channel history and all my vods, I apparently have never uploaded a vod with Fbiakia in it. So I'm just you just gonna have to take my word on Fbiakia's pit causing that interaction. Now give me a second to set up the next situation that I forgot before uh, I was saying I will talk about H moon shield.
Okay, so this is a situation that actually comes up relatively often. I'm good thing I was uh, a lot more patient before I went to talk about the next thing, or I else I might have had to re-record this entire video. But versus H moons and auto heat, if they're running offense on you and they knock you down. Please do not DP, because as you're, you're going to notice here, I get like a true punish. I'm plus seven here. So even if I set this dummy to record after performing the to, to block immediately after performing the DP, like he's blocking here, you're gonna notice that I'm going to get a punish. Yeah. Now, like, what if I do like a two A meaty and I mess it up? See, I get regular hit by the burst, so. However, if I get counter hit by the DP, then it works relatively well. It works better. However, if the H Moon is aware of the fact that they're in heat, they're going to just fish for a 2 ADB. And then they're going to get the guaranteed punish. Like, they could mess it up, of course. Like, let's say they do for a 2 A meeting. Like, then Nadia here could actually throw that burst. But for most characters, they can't even do that. So if you're like playing like Hime or something, and you're like trying to DP versus someone in heat, that's very unrecommended. And even if you're Nanaya, you really shouldn't be uh, DPing versus an opponent who, who is like smart. Because they can just punish you for this. Like Kawaku, H. Kawaku doesn't even have to worry about time yet if she is going to do like a 2A meaty. That's... You can just command throw him. So that was the last thing that needed to be stated before, you know, I moved on to the next section, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so I spent like 30 minutes double checking and double labbing everything to make sure that the section on H Moon Shield was actually very good and very well informed and had a couple of useful OSs for you guys. So now that I have finally finished with H Moon uh, Burst, I can actually talk about H Moon Shield. So why is H Moon Shield so bad? Well, for those of you who aren't in the know, H Moon Shield is pretty much just F Moon Shield. However, versus things that are deemed as projectiles, they are. Uh... Let me set the dummy to quickly all shield real quick. I don't know if it properly shields this. No, it does not. Maybe if I do it max distance. Nope, it does not. Regardless, however, things that are deemed as projectiles, such as like Kawaku, Sea Kawaku plants. Uh, they work exactly the same as H Moon as F Moon Shield for H Moon. Uh, however, versus things that are deemed as normals and some other stuff that are also deemed as normals that aren't exactly normals or whatever that aren't intuitive or whatever, it automatically performs F Moon's auto follow up eight frames after with effective eight frames startup as soon as it's done. H Moons also have a special crouching shield. That they can get more powerful combos off of, assuming that they hit you counter hit, then they can most of them can link into 2A or 5A or whatever. Uh, and uh, tap shield is the only shield that H Moon has access to, and because of that, they gave them an extra two frames of tap shield for every single shield. So for air shield, H Moon tap is eight frames, however, for ground shield, H Moon tap is six frames. They have the same recovery as every other moon when it comes to shielding, etc, etc. So, th the reason H Moon Shield sucks is pretty much very close to the reason H Moon Shield sucks. I mean, H Moon Burst sucks, is that you always know when it's going to come out. Like, it's an inevitability if you hear or see the shield. And Melty Blood has some very strong shield uh, OSs. Like, extremely strong shield OSs. Like, first things first, give me a second to pause. Back to the training sh uh, stage, there are some moves that just don't properly work versus H Moon Shield that H Moon Shield would just always automatically lose against. Like, what, which one? 2 1 4 C? Yeah. H Moon Shield will always auto shield versus this move, which is fully invul with multiple hitboxes, meaning that this move will just always be H Moon Shield. If it's like buffered behind something else, it will be there as well, but even flat out, like if you're trying to OS versus this move with invul, 
you were going to find it very difficult as H move. C moves could like EX shield it to jump or press 5A or something or mash it or try to trade or get out of the way. However, H moves, if they're trying to deal with this move on wake up, it's a uh, lost cause for them. They just have to block it or try to like up back it. There's nothing else they can do. Now, back to what I was going to say earlier that H Moon Shield isn't super strong because you can always perform the same OS's versus it. So let me quickly set up a situation back on H Karaku. Okay, so I set up a situation, a very common one. Let's say you get an opponent on a meaty situation and you're going to try to run up into A them and oopsie daisy they shield immediately. So how do you beat this while also beating something like jump and block? which are the three dummies that we have saved here. Well, versus other shields, beating all three is not really doable. Sea Moon Shield specifically is so hilariously busted that they can just really just, they can really just force this RPS on every single knockdown that you get them on. It's why running offense versus H uh, Sea Moon without some sort of like powerful <laughs> Okizeme tool is like such a pain in the ass. However, for versus F and H Moon specifically, and mostly just H Moon, because H Moon, because F Moons can cancel their shield counter into specials, or like heavily delay their shield counter. H Moon has no delay, so the OS that I'm about to teach you, it works very, 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 very strong against them. So what you're going to do is you're going to run up, immediately into whatever button. It doesn't have to be 5C. I'm using 5C because it's easier for me to use 5C in this situation. However, you want to buffer that buffer button underneath the A button. And then buffer a jump slightly afterwards. However, if you buffer it properly, the B button buffer will override the jump button buffer unless you hit a shield. Like, versus, you can see my inputs right now, but I have up input that did not come out versus this. It comes out there because I, but if I buffer the B button underneath my air, on my A button properly, that's buffering, that buffer is going to eat that up button input, unless we hit into a shield. I can't remember which one is shield. This one? Yeah. So if we hit into the, you can see that I'm in the air when I'm getting hit by this sweep. Now, what we want to do is that we need to choose a different button and, and, and input it after the B button buffer with two, like one, whatever. Like it could be one C, one B, or like four C, or four B. You can do this with like any combination of buttons. That's how uh, flexible this OS is. So if we do it properly here, It would be something like that and versus the opponent and block we don't have to worry about the up button input coming out but versus the opponent who gets hit like here when they're jumping the up doesn't come out like i did my media a little late but you can see that the up button didn't come out and we got like a full combo like i did it wrong there and this like this is an os that you do need to practice because it's not like free but it's a very, very powerful OS, and then while it's not free, it's not like super difficult either. You just need to practice this OS, and you can like always be H Moon Shield on Wake Up, and you can actually Im you can build it into your pressure. Although it's a lot more difficult to do it in pressure, however, it is doable because like what you're doing is like so flexible. You can input it into like any situation where you're like dash, like let's say you're redashing, you can like buffer a redash with this sort of thing as well. Because you're buffering like a button underneath your 2A, right? Like here I'm buffering 2C underneath my 2A. So if my 2A hits something, 2C will automatically come out. So you're buffering that and then you're adding an up input that will only come out if you hit something. However, if you were to hit like that, you wouldn't get the up button to come out. Like if I set the dummy to just stand and not shield. So, you gotta practice, of course. Cause sometimes I'm pressing the up input too early. Yeah, but like that, you can always get the imp the up input to be like layered behind the C button buffer. So this is how you're supposed to deal with H Moon Shield on Wake Up. And also, the reason that H Moon Shield isn't as strong is also like layered into the fact that they don't have EX Guard. 
a really strong thing about C and F moves is that they can usually like create new gaps in your pressure by EX guarding certain part buttons and like giving themselves frame advantage enough to shield your next thing. So let's say you have something that's like completely frame tight. However, it's only frame tight by like a frame. But so if you EX shield the like the like what was a good what would be a good example? Like let's say I do something like that and it's like kind of delayed, right? And it would be it's frame tight however if i ex guard the first 2a i can now have enough frames to like shield or dp the second 2a h moon can't do that you always know that if you hit an h moon opponent blocking that there's no risk of ex guard meaning that the spots that they have to even shield in your pressure are much worse spots than like other moons another thing is h moon shields h moon characters can't hold their shields down like I, I messed up my dummy. <laughs> but I, I'm done using that dummy for that situation anyway. However, H moons can't hold down a shield, which really, really suck when it comes to versus characters with good jump ins. Give me one second to set something up. So this situation is very obviously exaggerated, but in this dummy set, I have Kwaku who has used all her air options landing on me in the corner. Let's say for some reason that I'm just re just now reacting to the air dash versus any other character as any other moon I should just clarify a very powerful option would be to walk up hold shield because even if you hold it early you can just catch everything you force her to land with after the air dash without doing anything which is like what 10 frames of ending lag uh, landing lag because she can't afford to hit into your shield. Like maybe if you're a C moon with a really, really, really bad hold shield and no meter to EX cancel it, you wouldn't do that, right? But for most other C moons, they have no problem walking up super early and dealing with all these options. However, H moon runs into the very, very sucky situation that they can't hold shield at all. Like I said, like five seconds ago. So they, they're holding a timing mix up here because while six frames is a lot more than four, it's still not enough to cover all the options that Kwaku can land with here. And this is like H, this is C Kwaku. While her JC is a hilariously dumb and brain dead jump in, it's not as stupid as this game gets, can get. Like think about like versus C Nania. If he uses his air dash or whatever and hand his second jump and now you're like you know he's going to land and you know that he's probably going to land on you with a button like there's a 90 percent chance that he's going to land on your head with a button but you don't know when he's going to do that button like is he going to do a really low to the ground jb is he going to do an early jc in order to prevent you from jumping up into the air like you don't know and now you're eating a timing mix up when for most of the other moons the answer is just hold shield and present that as the primary guess because hold shield can be held for like 30 frames on f and 60 frames on c so it forces like an actual like like for other moons it's a simple will this person shield here if they present shield do you, i think they will shield again for h moon it's like a whole nother layer is added on top of this. Can this H moon even guess when to shield versus my character? That's not a weakness that other moons have to worry about like whatsoever. So it's one of the reasons that H moon shield sucks so bad, other than the fact that it's super easy and so consistent to OS. And like I said very er much earlier with the FV Sion example, some moves just break auto shield because they, they just flat out one versus it 100% of the time. So now get now to pause again to set up the last part of my example of why h moon shield and this is like the very last reason it's not going to be a second for you but it's going to be like what five minutes for me give me a second <laughs> okay back again with the very final example of why h moon shield sucks okay so in this dummy we have the c koaku sets a sheet on wake up the very obvious uh, OS versus this is to 2A and to buffer a 5D underneath your uh, OS. Or 5D or 2D, it doesn't really matter. However, C and H F Moon are able to hold down their shield. So as soon as they realize that the 2A has not hit something, they can simply commit to the OS, hold 5D, and just continue. Like, However, H can't do that. So H Moon is, has to like... If you don't have like a character specific clash tool that you can use to beat heats on wake up with, you are learned to, uh, you're forced to learn how to, like, for this character, like, C Kawaku is one of the slower wake ups with a slightly slower average heat, so you have to do two A's. 
I'm not very good at the like the OS, but yeah. You're also forced into a shield counter punish, which is not exactly ideal. That's why a lot of the good H moons have access to a powerful clash normal. That way they can get slightly more damage on their heat punishes like that. Like for Koaku, like H Koaku, she just 2A 2B is like most of the cast, and they're are very few characters that you just raw to be if you think they're going to heat or something. However, most H moons have to like manually time a 2A A D O S in order to be heat, and they have to specify it for character and per meaty, which is a lot of extra work compared to C and F moons who just get to do a single 2A 2 a 5 D O S and just hold the shield afterwards. Like you don't need as much finagling on a C, C and F moon compared to H moon. Now that's the last thing about H Moon Shield. Now I've spent like what almost an hour bragging on H Moon for its weaknesses. It turns out when you automate a lot of the things that on the other moons are left up to choice, you tend to end up making them weaker because in a fighting game, the ability to mix up your timing is just hilariously important. If there's anything to take from H Moon's failure and CC, it's probably that uh <laughs> taking away the chance or the ability to mix up the timings of something tends to make it weaker. However, in order to make up for all these weaknesses that they gave H Moon, they gave H Moon something that's like unarguably good. Like there is, I guess you could talk about H Moon's uh, guard gauge, how it's much stronger than the other moons, but the other moons can EX guard in order to regain guard gauge. H Moon can't regain guard gauge, meaning that they can actually be like true guard broken in like versus very specific characters, being C Alco and C Ro. However, something that H Moon has that is like undeniably strong and under <laughs> is H Moon Bunker. So give me a second to set up a few uh, training dummies so I can highlight my point, and then we just I. I know it's been an hour, but I, I feel so stupid. I keep saying, give me a second, but then I pause the video. And so it's not like a second. Like, <laughs> like, it's been like, what, two hours since I started recording this on my end? <laughs> and it's, it's only been 50 minutes since you started watching this video. Oh, man, I'm an idiot. <laughs> give me a sec. I say it again. <laughs> okay. So I have the dummy set up, but before I do that, let's read some just raw facts about H Moon Bunker real quick. And let me describe to you how it works. First things first, we need to clarify what we even mean by H Moon Bunker. There are two bunkers in this game. There is the Universal Bunker, and then there is what is colloquially called H Moon Bunker that is actually referred to as EX Bunker. Because EX, because it costs meter. Regular Bunker is like this. There's a clash startup and then this active part that comes afterwards. The active part can be strengthened up. It's, it can be sped up if you hit into the clash. C and F moon are capable of doing their uh, bunker and block stun for 50 meters, but it has the exact same properties as the regular bunker. So even though they, they also can spend meter for their bunker, it's the exact same. H moon, however, is completely different because of the way if I set the dummy to do this pre-recorded block string, I can spend a hundred meter if I bunker and block strung for a bunker that performs hard knockdown. Reading my notes again, is 19 frames startup, it's active for three frames, and it has 20 frames of recovery. However, the entire move is strike and vulnerable. This means that in order to eat, take advantage of the recovery, you have to throw it, which is not possible if you block it because it is only minus seven and it has noticeable pushback. If you do block it, you are going to be pushed too far away for you to throw it, frankly. Even if you have a broken dash like Scion and History, you're just too out of range. When it connects versus you, as in if it hits you not blocking, it grants a hard knockdown, not techable, so it's not a soft knockdown that's techable, it's a real hard knockdown, and it can counter hit for extra advantage, it will never deal damage, it deals flat zero damage, yeah, okay? Also, the tip box on Bunker is something that varies from character to character. For the best EX Bunkers in the game, it will be regular Scion, then Kohaku, then Hime. 
Vroog and Len have noticeably worse bunkers than other H moons because their hitboxes are a lot tinier on their on their bunkers. Everyone else has a relatively mediocre one. There's usually there's probably some BS like a random mid tier in this game probably has a relatively good bunker or something, but like those are the big ones when it comes to like oddities for bunkers. So why is this good? H moons it's pretty much what they are giving to H moon to deal with the fact that they can't ex guard out of pressure. And Melty Blood Pressure is extremely ambiguous if it's done on a C or H mood because of rebeat pressure. Even F moons who aren't as ambiguous, they, they're generally plus enough that it, it, you just flat out need Bunker if you're not going to have EX Guard in this game. It's designed so strong because it's literally all H moons have on defense. I don't actually have to, I don't think I have to explain to you why having a hard knockdown guard cancel is powerful if you do need to explain to you i have a very fun game that you can play it's called grand blue fantasy versus rising you can boot up that game and very quickly learn why a strong hard knockdown down guard cancel is annoying and it's why it gets complained about the most when it comes to h moon mechanics like people complain about h moon burst but it's usually like the mindset swinginess thing about it People complain about H moon shield, but no one complains about it like screwing them over or whatever. They complain about how bad it is. People complain about H, bun H moon bunker or EX bunker because of how good it is. It's like the only it's the it's the H moon's claim to fame and it's why some people think H moon is cheap. Even though, like I said at the very very beginning, nobody really thinks that unironically anymore. So how do you deal with this very very strong tool? Now, this counterplay isn't as like de facto as all the other pieces of counterplay as I gave out because unlike H Moon Burst and H Moon Shield, H Moon Bunker is good. Again, <laughs> I must reiterate it before someone thinks that I am like downplaying. H Moon Bunker is strong. It's pretty much the if like it's not the reason you should play an H Moon. By the way, like if you're playing H Moon to, to cheese people with this bunker, you're gonna run into problems unless you play Hime or like Satsuki. But it's a strong tool, and a lot of people have issues trying to play around it. So that's what this video is for. So first things first, as you can see in this situation I set up, in order to H Moon bunker, I need a hundred meter. If I should do it again versus this block string, you can read my inputs, nothing comes out. I can only get regular bunker. And I can't do regular bunker and block stun if you can read my inputs coming out. So, I need 100 meter. However, H moon has a much smaller max bar than every other moon. F and C moon can hold up 100, uh, 300 meter. However, H moon automatically goes into heat at 200 and their max is like 199 so that's legit half of their bar that they have to dump on this because of that and the fact that meter is just so important for h moons in general due to all the things being stacked against them that means you it's actually easier to tell when an h moon is going to bunker and it's once you uh bait it by blocking it they are down 100 meter so i have a list of places where h moons tend to bunker first things first h moons will bunker when they have low red health you don't really need a hundred bar if you're not going to do anything with said bar right so Like, if you can't do anything with the meter, there's no real threat to uh, <laughs> dumping it, like, to just try to reduce, uh, you know, turn the tables. So there's no red health to gain. The H moon can run mix off of butter bunker meterously. This only applies to Sasuke with her Sandori. San Sasuke, that's a real, real Sandori off of bunker. I'm very sorry. I apologize. <laughs> As the only H moon player, I apologize if this happens to you. It sucks, yeah. Hime runs Flight Mix off of her bunker, and Nania can run Fast Fall Mix off of his bunker. Those three H moons can actually mix you off a of bunker immediately. So they will do it even if they're only at 100 meter, because they can get huge reward off of it. Now, if the H moon player is being needlessly reckless on defense, like if you notice that they're doing a lot of mashes and early jumps, but you're catching them, they're like more likely to bunker even if the meter does not allow them to. Now, another situation in which somebody might try to bunker is if 
Okay. I'm going to try and see if I can set this in training mode. Let's see if I can set it up in training mode real quick. Okay, I spent like an hour, not an hour, I spent 10 minutes trying to set it up in training mode. I couldn't get it. And then I spent 20 minutes looking through my YouTube in order to find an example. I, I can't find the example. Uh, what I was going to say afterwards is that a very proper situation that can happen is that if you hit an H moon into a 200 meter and then stagger your button in a weird way, they can get a free bunker in which they will automatically answer heat after the bunker and they can buffer the bunker and get like just a free bunker that's a situation that can cause you to get bunkered a lot more often than you would think and i just can't find any proof of it i know it sounds weird and i know like gomp didn't believe me at first but he he checked and he, it happens and i know for a fact it happened because i do it i just don't have any footage of it on hand i'm sorry uh next issue that next situation that causes hg's moon to burst uh Asian players to burst more than they should is if they're bad at minute management. Like, let's say you're down like a whole bunch of life. The H Moon player is down a whole bunch of life, and they're just like, okay, I'm going to try to do it. I'm just going to bunker, run mix. Well, run mix, I say, as they're going to jump out the corner and hit you with a 2A meaty. But they're going to try to do that and win the game. Some H Moon players are more prone to doing that than others. That's not actually that big of a deal though for you because again bunkers don't do any damage and there's no real mix off of them in this situation unless those they're the three characters that I mentioned before so that's not really that big of a deal. Now what's more important if the H1 is good at meanage management there's going to be very obvious sparks that they bunker. Again if they have low red health to gain and they have a whole bunch of excess meter they're just going to sit there and wait for you to hit them so they can bunker and try to get a fish for a knockdown, pretty much. Uh, that's, like, you need to be aware of the fact that some H Moon players who are, like, super smart, they're going to fish for that. I don't really do that myself, because I usually just use air dodge to burn my meter. But some H Moon players will try to, like, if, if they can, they're going to use the bunker in order to get rid of excess meter. Or maybe like they're on the defense and they're losing and they have like too much meter So they're like, okay, you know what after I'm going to bunker because I need to be under like I'd rather be at 70 than at 190 meter or whatever and it's around two and Make my rounds start really uh, obvious So they're just gonna burn the meter and even if they don't hit you They're like, okay, my meter is safe for round two. My meter is in a good they're, they're in a good. It's in a good spot now, something that is important to note versus Bunker is that there is one OS for it. H moons cannot do it to other H moons, but C and F moons can do it to other H moons. Give me one second to shut it up. Okay, this doesn't really take that long to set up because, again, it's a really simple OS. But here, what is the F? The F, uh, the FCL is doing basic 5A pressure. However, if I have to Bunker any part of this, they're going to immediately throw. However, you can already see that there are some major holes in this OS. It's a distance thing. If you're too far to throw them normally, you just it's going to not work. However, another thing is that an H moon player shouldn't be burst uh bunkering here anyway. Yeah. This is like the only OS there is for H moon bunker. Again, it's a very strong tool H moons have. So what you're really going to end up doing in order to bait is that you're going to just leave huge gaps in your pressure. I mean, this is probably like the the game design thing that went underneath. Like they, they probably thought like, okay, because people are scared of the H Moon Bunker, they're going to leave huge gaps in their pressure so that the H Moon players can actually jump out of people's pressure. It's a nice idea, but it doesn't really work because like as I write, one of the few weaknesses of H Moon Bunker is that you don't get any mix. You get a meaty in a game with C Moon and a shield. <laughs> so like, yeah, you meaty them, but they can gamble back with a DP. They can gamble back with a shield. And if you are not able to like mix them past that strong, very strong defensive mechanic, what, what are you doing? You spend a hundred meter in order to not be in the corner anymore. And that's assuming they get hit by the bunker. Again, some characters can run strong offense with decent gaps that allow them to block that don't give a flip about bunker. Like C Siren is like one of the big characters that can do this. But a lot of characters that have strong mid-range pressure that are like pressuring you at a decent mid-range, 
They don't care that much about Bunker because they're not in your face often enough for it to matter. Versus characters like H. Sion and H. Kohaku, who, who I mentioned earlier as having the super big Bunkers, they can make those characters care a little bit more about dealing with Bunker that way, but they're usually blocking the Bunker. They end up blocking the Bunker really often. Like, you know when an h moon can Bunker. If they are under 100 meter, they can't Bunker at all. If they're over 100 meter, you do have to keep Bunker on the mine. But again, as I wrote here on my doc, uh, Bunker is... It's an attempt to swing the match back into the h moon's player. And usually, if this is the case, they don't have life lead anymore. So you just have to play calm and play defense. And that's going to vary in how hard it is versus... Like some H moons, again, you're just gonna like eat yes because you blocked the bunker. I mean, because you ate the bunker. But versus most of them, they're going to like tr try to open you off. And H moon defensive mechanics, like most other moons, have really strong defensive mechanics, like EX guard, EX shield, just shield into like delay special, or whatever. Like, it's scary. Yeah, I'm not going to lie and tell you that H moon bunker is weak or whatever but it's not as big a deal as some of you make it out to be when you eat it, okay? Now, there is one situation in which H. Moon Bunker is hilariously, stupidly, unquestionably, ungodly strong. What is it? Let me set it up real quick, and... Okay, so this dummy I set up is not gonna be like the most perfect example of what I'm trying to talk about, but it's gonna be good enough for the purposes of this yapping video. So let's say I'm H. Kwaku and I'm running pressure. The, I set the FCL to 2C immediately as soon as there's a gap, right? Okay. So what actually the actual button FCL would press in the situation is 2B. But because of the dummy, it's always going to block after the 2B and it's not going to showcase what I'm trying to show you guys right here. Okay. So I'm running pressure as, F Kwaku, as H. Kwaku and I leave gap. I, I could just hit, hit, but like, let's say I have a spear to spare and I'm not super interested in like getting a counter hit, but I want to knock down. So what I'm going to do is as soon as I get hit, like I'm going to do like this and just hold back. And as soon as I see that I get, that I'm blocking something, I'm immediately going to bunker you. And as H. Kohaku, I'm running Oki now. That's the strongest part about H Moon Bunker to me. Like you can use it, like if you cut your pressure short, you can immediately get like a strong knockdown in the corner. And even versus B buttons, like the reason that works so well is that an opponent is not pressing 2B out of offense and then just holding down back afterwards because they're gonna see that they that you blocked it and they're immediately going to do something else usually, like 90% of the time. So what you're gonna do is that you're going to either counter hit or just regular hit the next thing that they do. And if it's a counter hit, whoa, baby, they're, they're knocked down in the corner, counter hit by bunker. That means you get an extra 20-ish frames of advantage and you can set up your offense. And this is where every single H moon gets actual mix. If they like, if they bunker you while you are in the corner, I'm gonna set the dummy back to C, let's see. And I'm gonna actually set battle set settings to like regular counter hit. I'm gonna set it to low counter because I think that's how Bunker is counter programmed to counter hit. So, like, in this situation, I get, like, see, I get actual Oki. It's crazy. Most H moons aren't as, like, swingy as H Kohaku, obviously, but most of them are kind of swingy. So the fact that they get, like, a either a really strong meaty there or like they get to actually set up their projectile or whatever on your knockdown is insane. That is H Moon's Bunker's strongest strength if you ask me. And if you, I'm gonna be real with you, I don't really use this in my play that much often. I, I was thinking about it for a few weeks and I was like, wait a second, isn't using the 100 meter for Bunker on your own offense way better than it is, it's way better than using it on your defense, right? And I was like, Hmm, am I crazy? And I was like, no, actually, I'm actually not. I'm, I'm not crazy. <laughs> it's just way stronger to get like a knockdown in the corner that you don't have to spend frames like jumping over their head. Like if I bunker here while I am uh, in the corner myself. Oh, 
like I have to jump over them. And I don't get it. like I I just get the media right. Like it's not bad, mind you, but but if I don't have to jump over, I can like set up a projectile that they can't deal with if in this situ in this situation. So it's just so much stronger when you don't have to worry about having to get the good positioning anymore. That's why H Moon Shield a bunker is like way stronger when you're using it to like enforce your own offense, like take your turns. Like let's say, like the I'm gonna turn the dummy off from doing this recover stuff because it's not it's not gonna work. But like let's say in this situation, like I do a five A and like a dash five A, and then I just walk forward and block it, and I expect them to mash here. And as soon as they mash something, I'm going to immediately bunker. I'm right next to them in the corner. They're knocked down. It's really, really strong. You're pretty much, in return for uh, not dealing any damage, you're giving up a hundred meter in order to get your party started off of off of block string offense. Because not every single H moon has bonkers ox block string offense. Not every single H moon is willing to take that meter, like dump the meter like that. Some H moons can actually dump their meter on their block string offense and have it work relatively well. Like H uh, Power CL and H Row are like the big characters who can spend meter on their block string offense and not mind it. But some characters like H Walk who don't have any tools that they want to use in block string offense like that. So like they could just like sit right here. And like you either have to jump out or hit block hit into them and then they get the bunker if you hit into them. Even if you jump out, like you're, you're jumping out of the corner, so it's like really easy to prevent you from like, you know, losing the situation. Like I said, H Moon Bunker, really strong, and it's even stronger when used offensively compared to its probably defensive intentions. So that's it. I, <laughs> this is what, I think this is the longest yapping video by like a long shot. And I honestly, like I had a lot more to say. I had a couple of jokes that I was going to make into this video and I had a lot more examples and I wanted to like watch a few VODs, but I kind of realized that, um, yeah, it's, it's 80, this video is like 70 minutes already and I still, I had to, <coughs> my voice is still not as strong as it should be because I'm still recovering from my cold and there's also the fact that I do have to edit the music for this entire thing. Which is probably going to take me like, what, 10, 20 minutes, 30 minutes? That's going to be slightly annoying. But, yeah, it's probably better than pausing and unpausing the music anytime I stop the recording. So, that's it. Thank you for tuning in to this yapping video. Uh, I don't think I'll make another one for Melty Blood this week. But maybe I stream Melty Blood a little bit. Who knows? <laughs>